Hi everyone, Steve here. Welcome to this version of Monday Morning Musing. We are continuing on discussing the uh, topic of Plato and the soul, and we are moving into the old, uh, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, and I left you off the last time just introducing the idea that Paul never speaks in the entire uh, body of Pauline literature of the soul existing apart from the body, because he is Jewish, and he's not Platonic, and he is closer to the traditional or the main Old Testament period view of the soul than the intertestamental period. And it's imperative that we understand as we go forward in this series and when we hit the Pauline uh, epistles and we start talking about Pauline psychology, that we understand that Paul's use of the soul is 100% in line with the Hebrew idea, not the Greek version. Now, here are some things that might freak you out a little bit. Paul never speaks of salvation of the soul. Think about that. Think about the typical gospel message and the typical gospel appeal. It's all about getting your soul saved. Go ahead, check me out, do a word search, get your soul saved. Save your soul in the sense of an invisible separate part of your being. You're not going to find it. Number two, Paul never speaks of the pre-existence of the soul. Again, that's a Platonic, Gnostic idea. And Paul never uses the Greek summary of a human being as body and soul. If you ask a typical Christian to find what a human being is, well, we're body and soul, and they would use soul and spirit interchangeably. Three major points that your average believer thinks is routine Christian doctrine, Paul never uses it. Now, we are going to devote multiple sessions to Paul's use of the terms regarding his psychology. So we get that. I just wanted to leave that, those kind of shots with you today. So we are going to begin a survey of the Gospels and how the Gospels use the term suke or psyche, depending on nuances of some Greek, for the soul. And we are going to begin right now. It is used, the term is used 111 times in the New Testament. However, it is not always translated soul. The Greek suke corresponds exactly to the Hebrew nefesh. Over only 40 times out of 111 is that word translated as soul. Now here are some of the other uh, translations of psyche or suke. Life, lives, minds, minds, persons, us, human being, heartily, all those references are not platonic. It is not always translated as soul. Now, we've got to get that straight. So let's just take a quick shot in this episode of Matthew's Gospel. The word is used 16 times in Matthew's Gospel. And in all 16 references, suke is used to refer to the whole person, a single being, a living, moving organism, a whole human being. For instance, in the very familiar passage uh, where Herod comes, uh, seeks to kill the babies in Jerusalem. The scripture says it seeks 
the child's life. Guess what that word life is? It's okay. Herod was not seeking the infant's invisible, immaterial, immortal, eternal stuff. Herod was seeking to kill the children, and the word used was suke. It stood for the whole person, the whole being. And there's another reference uh, in, uh, in Matthew where, that I like to uh, kind of wrap up this session with, just in the sense of trying to drive into you that when you see soul in the gospel, he's not talking about the invisible part of you that's going to go to heaven. In uh, Matthew 6, I'll just read, read it to you. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor about your body, what you shall put on. Is not your life more than food and more than body and more than clothing? Guess what word life is there? Okay. Again, not talking about the uh, immortal, invisible, indestructible, immaterial, simple, pure, un compounded mystical entity that floats into heaven when you die. It's the same word, and it's talking about the totality of a human being. So that is just a little more intro, a little bit about Matthew. For uh, repetition purposes, 16 references in Matthew, not one of them refers to Plato's concept of the soul. See you next time.